Hey guys, it's Katie here with Life in the Mundane, and I'm excited to jump into our new series on moving and talking to you today specifically about how to get big projects done with kids. Now, I'm going to be talking about it in the context of moving, so more like a home improvement project kind of perspective. However, these same tips apply across the board, whether you're working on home improvement projects or, you know, big overhaul, de decluttering of your house working on even a work project at home, whatever it is, the idea is working on a big project that um, while your kids are kind of under tow and something that's usually gonna take more than just a simple afternoon or an evening to work on, something that's gonna take time. So let's get started. So what do you do when you can't, when you have these big deadlines, these big projects you need to hit, but you can't afford to just hire a sitter whenever you want. A lot of times these projects take, um, like I said, multiple series of time for us for moving. Um, we actually started the process of working on our home about nine months before we actually got it on the market. So we were tearing out floors, remodeling bathrooms, so much mudding and texturing and painting. Um, like I said, some tile work, electrical work, all sorts of things, just trying to get our house um, looking presentable so that we could sell it. And so this was a long process, definitely something that we couldn't just hire a sitter for. So um, just kind of want to share what has worked for us. The first step I would say anytime you're getting into any big project like this is to plan. Okay, and plan a couple of different ways. One, plan for the day to day things that your kids are going to need. So start out with the most important, basic, necessary skill that all your children are going to need to eat. <laughs> Um, take some time to meal plan out what you're going to have that day. I know that if I'm going to be painting all day long, I'm going to need to stick something in the crock pot because I'm not going to feel like taking a break from painting to make this big meal and a big mess in the kitchen. So I would throw something in the crock pot and have it ready to go. But I'd also go ahead and plan their snacks for the day and um, have those set out too so that I didn't have to make any decisions. Everything was pretty simple for them to get themselves and kept the distractions down to a minimum. So planning that kind of stuff to make your day run a little bit smoother, definitely something that will help the process. But also make sure you're planning well within your project itself. So again, for like a home renovation project, um, home improvement project, you want to make sure you have your basic supplies set out because guess what? It is not fun to take kids to a home improvement store. It is most definitely not fun to take kids to a home improvement store multiple times a day. Um, you do not want to be back at Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or whatever for the fourth time today because once again you forgot this other piece to your project. Now, is that going to happen at points? Yes, but the more planning you do in advance, the better the day is going to go. Keep in mind that a little bit of planning can go a long way. The other two steps of planning that I think sometimes we can forget but actually make a big um, impact on our kids is planning a reward at the end. So maybe, you know, mom's got to be busy all day working on this project. And I know that's not going to be very much fun, but when we get done tonight, if we can get to this point, then mom and dad are going to stop what we're doing and we're going to watch a family movie together, or we're going to go to the park, or we're going to have, you know, your favorite dinner or whatever it is. Just explain that there will be an end and kind of what they can expect from the day. Um, the other thing along these same lines, but a little bit more of a big picture, that is more of a, an explaining the process of what entails in that moment or in that day. Um, but I also think it's important to plan and prepare your kids for the bigger picture, especially when it comes to moving. Um, our kids are used to like the 90 second uh, clips from the movies where, you know, they put out a for sale sign and then about 20 seconds later, they slap a sold sign on there, the moving truck pulls up, all the boxes are loaded into the truck, they get to their new home, it's all unloaded and unpacked for them and miraculously, you're moved. Wouldn't that be great if that's how it worked? Um, but unfortunately, it is far from that and they really are shocked, my kids at least, were shocked at how many steps were involved in the process. So, you know, kind of just explaining to them that, yeah, this is a long thing. We, we did, we worked on our house for nine months. Now, we weren't working every single day, every single night, every single moment of those nine months, but we were working a good chunk of time each week towards this goal. And so explaining to our kids what the end goal was and what the different projects were that needed to be completed really did help them to be more understanding and patient with us and helped us to be more understanding and patient with them as we realized 
how much and how long this process was going to take, especially in a child's eyes. So a lot of planning can help um, in a big way. The second tip for working with kids is to try to involve them as much as you can, okay? Now, this is a great opportunity. You would be shocked what kids are able to do. They can help, whether it's, you know, painting or if you are working on decluttering, they can help you go through your clothes and your toys and pick out things they don't play with anymore. I know it's not always done exactly the way you want it and it might take a little bit more time, but it is definitely something worth involving them in. Um, it's also a great teaching opportunity, especially when it comes to home improvement times. My kids have learned so much through this moving process on how we do different things um, when it comes to projects around the house. So definitely taking those teachable moments and doing it. And just remember, when you're tempted to think, oh, it'll take so much longer and I already have so much to do, your kids are going to come in the room and interrupt no matter how you slice and dice this. Absolutely, no matter how you do this, unless outside of hiring a babysitter the entire time, if your kids are home, they're gonna come and interrupt. And if they are with you in the process and you are training them and teaching them, you are, you are working towards equipping them, which is part of our job as a parent, um, for the future, so you're gonna get a great, they're gonna get a great benefit, you're gonna get a great benefit out of that, um, but it will slow you down a little bit, or you can choose to exclude them from the whole process, just kind of shove them off to the side, and guess what? They're gonna come in and they're gonna interrupt, and they're constantly gonna be asking questions, and mom, can you help me with this, and can we do this, and I'm bored, and I'm hungry, and all these different things, and it's most likely, it's still gonna end up slowing you down, and it's most likely gonna end up in somebody snapping, or crying, or being emotional, and it's just, it's not pretty. So take that time, include them. If they are too young to be included, or maybe it's not a, pro a project that's appropriate to include them, include them as far as in the space, as much as you can. So obviously, we have babies and toddlers that weren't able to help as much, although they did help some. Um, but we just put a pack and play in the room that we were working in, and so they were still close by, and they had that proximity to us, and felt included in the process. For older kids, if um, there's a project they're particularly interested in, but maybe not able to execute themselves, have them watch mom or dad complete the task, watch YouTube videos on, you know, how, why we do things a certain way, or how we do it. I guess that's the homeschool mom and me, but... Um, just desiring to make everything a learning opportunity. My kids have learned so much through this entire process and it's really been fun to see that. So include them when you can. Okay, but step number three is that there are gonna be interruptions and you do need to plan for them. So I have a snack basket during these big projects especially um, and it's actually translated into doing sort of a similar thing now that we have moved and we are out of this transition time. But I made a snack basket and the kids knew I set a timer that snack time was gonna be at this time and this time. And so there was no coming to mom and asking, well, when is snack or what? They could go, they could look at the timer and see when it went off. They knew they could get one thing out of that basket. And that helped a lot with just minimal interruptions because I don't know about you, but that's like 90% of the interruptions I get is uh, food interruptions. So helping do that just cuts down on the distraction. Another thing is if you are gonna have your kids do more screen time, we most definitely took advantage of um, the screens and doing TV or maybe educational games on the iPad or whatever, more so than we normally would for sure. But think about it this way, it's a temporary time, it is something fun, it kind of keeps them distracted, but don't be surprised when they're watching the same things they always watch, once they get bored more easily and distracted, more fighting and bickering. Um, so we would try to mix it up sometimes and get a stack of new movies from the library or rent a Redbox movie or something like that just to mix it up. Um, also know that with this, it is a give and a take. Um, we definitely knew this ahead of time and it was just confirmed during this process. But um, TV oftentimes is a nice, easy, temporary, short-term solution, um, but you pay for it in the long run. There will be discipline issues that come up with it. Our kids are always more short-tempered and argumentative when this happens, um, when they go through longer periods of watching TV, but <laughs> sometimes it's necessary for a short time. So um, cut yourself some grace and some slack there, but also understand that on the flip side, so if it's you know at the end of a project or once you've moved, whatever, that you're gonna do have to do a little bit of detoxing, a little bit of reprogramming, um, and making sure that your kids understand that that was a very temporary thing and not the new normal. Um, I'll be talking about that uh, next month talking about kind of how we have uh, worked on that habit over the years and kind of cut down a lot on screen time. And so be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to check that out in other videos. 
uh, to come. But anyways, so I do think planning for those interruptions. Um, obviously, if you can send your kids outside to play, that would be awesome. Because we were a lot in the winter months during this process, we didn't get to take advantage of that as much as we wanted to, but um, it is a great solution. A big tip on kind of minimizing those distractions is giving your kids some attention before you start your projects. So this works especially with little ones, but all of the kids in general. If you fill up their cup some, you, um, you give them a little bit of their love language. If you're not familiar with the five love languages, give them a little bit of what they need. Sit down and read a book with them. Have breakfast with them. Do something like that. Go outside and throw around a ball for a few minutes. Just 10, 15 minutes of your invested time can really add up to them being willing to let you work a little bit more on these projects. So keep those things in mind. The fourth and last final tip that I have is to sort of think outside the box. There are gonna be things, whatever the project is, where you do need uninterrupted time um, to really focus on this. So think outside of the box of times that you could do this. Um, can you work after the kids have gone to bed? We did a lot of painting projects after the kids had gone to bed and it was nice because it was dry by the time they woke up in the morning. Um, if you can't, maybe you can wake up a little bit earlier or um, switch childcare with a friend and see if you know if they're willing to help you out during this process then maybe you could babysit a date night for them the next month whatever it might be um, this is also really helpful even if you don't have the funds to hire an actual babysitter um, another one is to try to break down as many of your tasks as possible into 10 or 15 minute chunks i was really surprised when i thought of my to-do list how long it actually was but when I, when I really broke it down, it was quite a few tasks that could actually be completed within a five, five to 15 minute um, range. So kind of breaking down those little tasks and setting timers throughout the day. So yes, I could work on a small task like that during my child's, my younger kid's nap time, but guess what, I'm a mom. So nap time for the little ones is also the time for me to eat, for me to shower, for me to use the bathroom, for me to work with the older kids on school, you know, to get any cleaning done. I mean, you know, nap time is, is pretty well booked already. So I was overwhelmed at the thought of trying to jump into one of these projects that were extra on my already very busy day, but I could take 10 minutes before I jumped into my regular nap time routine and um, could take 10 minutes to, to take a little bit off of the plate there. So just a couple of tips. I hope that's been helpful to you. Again, whether you're moving or working on any kind of project um, with your kids around, I hope this has been helpful to you. Just remember that it is temporary. It can be done, it will be done. Um, and also just know that you need to give yourself grace and give your kids grace. Um, I think that was one of the big things that I learned through this process was how much um, it really does. They understood we had to work on this, they understood it would take time, but they really didn't understand how much time it would take. And so when I really thought of it from their perspective, it gave me a lot more grace to deal with the moment to moment um, outbursts or frustrations that came up from them. So. Um, if you have other tips, I would love to hear what you do when you're working with your kids um, with big projects. And I hope you guys will subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. I'm making the most of the little moments in homeschooling, home management, parenting, and everything in between. And I, would, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.